Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Cars with Kyle. Today I'm going to be showing you 10 top tips and tricks for your brand new 22 Equinox. Really appreciate the support and all the subscribes on the previous videos. If you found any value in this, go ahead, give that thumbs up. Please subscribe, it really helps out the channel. Without further ado, let's dive right on in. First up is the driver info center. This, it's going to show you all sorts of nice vehicle info, but there's actually some hidden ones. So let's go into the menu. Going to hit the left arrow, go down to options going to scroll down to info pages, hit the right arrow, and we're going to edit the list. From here, you can see a lot of them are pre-selected. We're going to add fuel economy, follow distance, battery voltage, coolant temperature, economy trend, and oil pressure. Now you're going to see a whole lot more info when you're diving in here. All the trips, fuel, oil life, tire pressure, air filter life, fuel economy, speed, timer, follow distance, battery volts, coolant, all that stuff. Really cool, lots of info right at your fingertips. Up next, we have the standard Chevy Safety Assist. So this is gonna come with six really cool features. First, you have your forward collision alert. This button here in between the cruise control is gonna determine the sensitivity, far, medium, or close. Generally, I recommend leaving on medium. If you want it more sensitive, put it further, less sensitive, put it closer. Basically what it does, let's say a car slows down in front of you, slams on the brakes, you're coming up too fast. First, it's gonna beep at you. Second, it's actually gonna shine some lights up on the windshield. And then lastly, it can actually apply the brakes too if it senses an imminent crash, hopefully lessen the severity of the incident or avoid it altogether. That's also gonna be with that automatic uh, emergency braking with it. Also with the front sensors, it also has front pedestrian braking. So if it senses a person uh, walking out in front of you, say in like a parking lot or even on the neighborhood road, it actually is gonna alert you and also break as well. Really cool stuff. Next, you have the lane keep assist with lane departure warning. That works when you're going over 31 miles an hour. If you start veering out of your lane without a turn signal, it can actually give you a nudge back and it'll beep at you as well. Last one, you have IntelliBeam. So this little emblem, if you click that button, you're gonna see that emblem appear on the screen at night. It's automatically gonna control your high beams, turning them on and off if it senses cars in front of you or not. Really cool. Whoops, looks like I actually missed the following distance indicator. So we're gonna navigate down here to it. Basically, it's gonna tell you the distance in between you and the car in front of you. Safely, they recommend keeping at least three seconds in between you and the vehicle in front of you, just so you have enough time to brake. Personally, I'm a fan of the auto stop feature and leaving that on. Basically how it works is when you pull up to a stoplight or stop sign, your foot's fully depressed on the brake. It's actually gonna turn off the engine or it can. It's gonna keep your lights, fan, radio going, all that stuff. And then the second you start lifting up off the brake before your foot's even off, it's gonna engage the starter again and kick it back on. Now it's not any extra wear and tear on the starter. It's designed for it, but you actually can disable this feature. I know some people just simply don't like it. Next up is all wheel drive. So by default, it's actually gonna keep it in front wheel drive, sending power only to the front tires. If you press this button, you're gonna see that illuminate. And then it also says all wheel drive mode on on that driver info center. Honestly, 80% of the time, if it's nice out, you don't need an all wheel drive with it. Front wheel drive's fine. And it actually saves you a little fuel economy, but definitely in the snow, some people like it in the rain as well. Or if you go on any trails or anything, kick that all-wheel drive on and you're gonna be set. Now we're gonna change some settings in the vehicle. So we're gonna go into settings, over to vehicle. The first one is rear seat reminder. What this does is anytime you open the back doors 10 minutes before the vehicle started or anytime after the vehicle started, they're opened up. Once you turn the vehicle off, it's gonna beep at you and on the driver info center tell you, hey, check the back. It's so you don't leave any kids or pets back there, but for someone like me that doesn't have either, you can turn it off as it can get really annoying. Going back, we're actually gonna scroll down to remote lock, unlock, and start. Scroll down a little bit, remote window operation. So what that does is say it's a hot summer day, vehicle sitting outside, maybe you have a sunroof with the sunshade open, it can get really hot in the cabin of the vehicle. So you simply press and hold unlock on the key fob and it's gonna roll all your windows down simultaneously, letting fresh air in and hot air out. Turn that on. Now, passive door unlock, if you don't know about that, that's as long as you have the key, you walk up to the vehicle, press the button on the door handle, it's gonna unlock it. That's default set on, but passive door lock is not. This honestly is one of my favorite features. 
So I turn it on with a tr horn chirp. Now when you walk away from the vehicle, with the keys of course, after about five seconds, it's actually gonna auto lock for you. It's gonna chirp the horn once so you know that the vehicle's locked. If you leave the keys in here, it does not lock them in. The second that you close the driver door, it beeps three times so you know the keys are still in here. We're actually in the back seat for this next one. A lot of people don't know, but these seats actually recline. There's a little button lever that you pull, and it goes back, ha, huh. that's relaxing. Speaking of the back seats, I got one more trick for you. So back here, say you're loading up some cargo, uh, I don't know, maybe doing a home improvement thing and you need all the room, simply just pull these, drops the seats down so you don't have to go up front and inconvenience yourself. Super nice. Lastly, you can actually program the height of the power lift gate. So right now it's set to max, it's gonna open all the way. If you put it to three quarters, it's only gonna be partially open and you can actually program it. Let me go show you how. Once the power lift gate's open, all you gotta do, once it's set to three quarters, is move it manually to where you want it set, press and hold. It's gonna beep and flash the lights so you know that it's programmed. Now it's only gonna open to this height. Really useful for garage doors so it doesn't go up and hit the top. Well guys, that does it. That's my top 10 favorite tips and tricks about the new 22 Equinox. If you have any questions about anything, I'm really actually pretty good at uh, answering your comments. So shoot something down below. If you found some value in it, give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, always helps me out. I uh, really appreciate it. And hey, looking forward to the next one.